Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Padner, and today we have the brand new Umarax Hammer Carbine in 50 caliber. The shorter version of the hammer was announced at SHOT Show 2023. Of course, we saw it there, we talked about it there, uh, and it is finally here. So a much shorter lead time than its older brother, much longer brother. Uh, but the hammer's been on the market as a much longer version for a few years now and has done quite well. Uh, Umarex wanted a shorter, more compact gun, and that's why the hammer carbine is out. Now, this thing still tout some very impressive numbers from a power and velocity perspective. Uh, and because of its size, I think this is gonna be a real handy tool for those of you that do a lot of blind hunting and need something more compact and maneuverable. Going into the details of the hammer carbine, starting at the front, uh, we do have a fully shrouded barrel. Barrel's around 23 and a quarter inches, so not the longest barrel out there, of course, but that's the point. It's supposed to be shorter, but you do still have that shroud. Hopefully gonna mitigate some of the noise, but I would assume this is still going to be very, very loud, like the hammer, the larger version. Uh, dropping down, we do have a carbon fiber bottle. Now, what's different here is this is a much larger carbon bottle than what we saw on the original hammer. Uh, and that'll come into play here in just a second, but this is a 300 bar bottle, so 4350 PSI fill pressure, and it sits on a 3000 PSI regulator. Now, if you guys remember, the original hammer has a 400cc bottle, and that gives you roughly four good shots from 4350 to 3000 PSI before you fall off the regulator. Now, this 580cc bottle is actually giving you the same number of shots, and it's a shorter package overall than that 400cc bottle is, and that's because it's got a larger outer diameter to it. Uh, so this is a bit beefier in your hand, but still able to maintain that short package that they were going for with the hammer carbine, and still should give us four shots shots, which is huge. You're not going to need four, hopefully, in the field, but more than enough uh, if you can't quite get all the way to that 4350 PSI fill pressure. As long as you're getting over that 3000 PSI mark, you're going to get at least one good shot on the regulator, and that's the important part. Now dropping back on the bottle assembly, this is your regulator assembly, it goes right into the block of the gun. We have our gauge here on the right hand side, and then on the left hand side, we have our quick disconnect fill fitting, obviously very easy to attach to fill off of your compressors, tanks, whatever you have. If you wanna hand pump it, you certainly can. Wouldn't be my cup of tea, but you can. Um, drop into the trigger there. This is a pretty solid trigger as far as big bore triggers go. Should break right at about three pounds. Of course, we'll test that for you. Uh, and then coming back to the grip you do have an AR compatible grip assembly uh, you can see there's a Magpul grip on here now but you could swap it out for something of your preference if you so choose now just above that grip we do have a manual safety you push it forward to uh, fire and you drop it back to put it on safe now the interesting thing about the hammer uh, that throws a lot of people off I guess is that you do have a couple different safeties built in uh, so you have this manual safety right here that most people are going to use quite easily uh, and then at the back here you'll notice this kind of knob sticking out this is a field safety or a drop safety uh, this is actually going to prevent your hammer from either being cocked in the first place or if you do have it cocked and you're walking out to your stand or whatever, this will actually prevent it from firing should you drop the gun. Uh, so a neat little thing, not many guns have this, at least in the air gun world. Uh, and then the third safety is actually a magazine safety. So you can't fire the gun without the magazine in it. The magazines are right here. You actually have to depress this floor plate with the magazine for the gun to fire. So again, three safeties, uh, a bit of redundancy, I suppose, but really trying to ensure that uh, nothing that could go wrong goes wrong when you're in the field. Now, up above everything, we do have a Picatinny rail. You can see I've got an Element Helix mounted here. Probably a little bigger than I would go for if I was taking this gun hunting, but I like the capabilities for this on paper, which is, of course, important for our testing here. Uh, but standard Picatinny rail, no big deal there, and you should have plenty of mounting space to get whatever optic you choose into a comfortable position for you. Uh, coming back, one important thing to note, there is actually a secondary air cylinder in the stock right here. Same thing with the original hammer, but it gives you a lot of post regular plenum volume to fire from and you're going to need it to put out the kind of numbers this thing puts out. Now we'll show you how the, uh, the gun operates here in just a second, but first we do need to take the uh, field safety up a bit. So you're just gonna bring that up until you see the red ring on it. That will mean you can go ahead 
and cock the bolt back and actually operate the, the rifle. Uh, when you flip it over though, you can see our magazine entry. And like I said, you got that floor plate safety right there. Uh, but let's talk about these magazines really quick. Now, this is a slightly different variation of the magazine that we saw for the original hammer. And of course it is backwards compatible. This actually has kind of a little like Delrin or plastic uh, kind of uh, system inside of it that is going to create a airtight seal when you load this in. Uh, and that's important because original hammer owners will know that you did get a little air blow by kind of, you know, hits you in the cheek and the eye section a little bit um, and it startles you a bit. So Umarex wanted to take care of that, but it also creates a much more efficient air usage system. So you don't have any wastage out the sides. That's important because your slugs fire directly out of this magazine. You are not pushing them into the barrel. So on the magazine, it actually has the direction you're supposed to load. So you would load your slugs in from the rear, press them in, and then you would go ahead and slide the magazine in. Now you'll notice it's a two round magazine. So with it loaded all the way in like this, you would go ahead, push the action forward. And then what you'll notice here, and I'll do this straight up and down so you guys can see it, is that when you go ahead and cycle it, you see that magazine automatically kick to the side. Uh, and then when you cycle it again, obviously now it's not gonna move. So what Umarex has done here is they have actually a magazine release of sorts. So this little tab right here, you go ahead and push that forward and then you're able to slide the magazine out. I'll flip that over for you so you guys can see it a bit more closely, um, but very easy to do. Go ahead, flip the gun over. I'll press that mag release forward and just pull the magazine out. Really simple to do, very easy. And now you are clear and all good to go. So now that we've run through some of the important stuff uh, and shown you how to operate the gun, uh, a couple other details you should know. Um, at the back, you have a rubber butt pad and you will need it because the gun does recoil quite a bit. On the underside of the stock here, you do have your degassing port. Uh, this is gonna be important if you're traveling or if you ever need to service the gun, just know it's right there if you ever need it. Uh, the other things to note, this gun is actually made in the USA. They assemble them at Umarex USA in Arkansas. Um, many of the parts are sourced from the US as well. The stock's made here in the US. Like there's a lot of cool stuff going on with this gun. Uh, the bottles from Korea, the regulators from Taiwan, the magazines are made in Taiwan and the barrels made in Germany by Walther. Uh, that's Carl Walther, or Walther like the 10 meter company, not Lothar Walther. Uh, so a good quality German made barrel under here that should give us great accuracy. All right, now it's time to head out to the range now that we've covered all of the details. Let's see what kind of accuracy the hammer carbine has going for it. And more importantly, what kind of power it's putting out because those two things are gonna determine whether or not this should be in your hands this hunting season. Oh. All right, guys, so the hammer carbine on the range there, you could see from the video, it kicks like a mule. One other thing I will mention is obviously you saw us tethering the gun. We were running it off the tank with the tank valve open uh, just so I didn't have to constantly refill it and we were getting constant pressure above the regulated pressure. So we were getting consistent shots just the same way you would if you filled it to 4350 and took your three shots that this is gonna give you on that reg. Uh, I'll start with an honorable mention. We didn't show it to you. We did all the 510 ammo that we had some of it was pretty bad, uh, so if you don't see it on this video, probably not what I would recommend for the hammer if you catch my drift. Um, but the Air Venturi 420 grains, those Seneca 420s, uh, two inch group here for three shots, it's okay. Like I said, that's more of an honorable mention. We didn't show it to you. Uh, we've got the Hotson Vortex 550s. This is three shots in an inch and three quarters. Uh, for any sort of big game hunting at 50 yards or in, this is obviously gonna do just fine. Um, but by far the best, a one inch three shot group out of the 550 grain, grain Umarex SLAs. Uh, this is phenomenal accuracy. You can't ask for anything better than this out of a big bore at 45 yards. This is exactly what you would want to see and is going to translate even further than this with good accuracy. You did see the velocities up there as well. I'll just tell you, uh, 664 feet per second was our topped out velocity with these 550s. So you were looking right just under 540 foot pounds there, uh, which is a little bit below what Umarex rates the gun at, which is 550 um, so or 560, somewhere in that ball 
ballpark. So we're a little low with that, but obviously 500 plus foot pounds is nothing to sneeze at, especially out of a gun this size. This is certainly going to get it done on game, both in the accuracy and the power department. All right, so wrapping up the hammer carbine, uh, obviously the power is there, especially at under 35 inches. This thing's very compact. I like it for that a lot. I would have preferred something around or at least under the bottle, something to hold onto that's not carbon fiber bottle, but it's, it's really not a big deal. Um, like I said, the power is there, the accuracy is there. This thing's gonna put down whatever you wanna put down with it, and that's the important part. Um, overall, the performance, like I said, is there. You've got a solid shot count, you know, three, four shots is really all you're gonna need, and it comes with two magazines to give you those four shots. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff going here, and quite frankly, if I was gonna have to choose between the carbine or the full-size hammer, I'd be taking the carbine all day. That size is important to me, uh, and, and right around eight pounds, so it's not too much to lug around. You get a lighter scope on this, and I think you're gonna be plenty happy. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the hammer carbine, check it out on our website, pyramidair.com. Hope you enjoyed the video today. We appreciate you watching. For The Insider, I'm Tyler Patner, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. See ya.